today. So this guy, I just picked him up and I'm gonna bring him over here so you guys can see. And there is our fish. <laughs> we might do from like multiple angles. So how do you guys like that right in your face, huh? Um, so <laughs> we're gonna be doing it from multiple angles. Uh, but one of the things that can be fun about doing something like the fish is that you can catch all like the luminescence. If you look really close at their scales, there's so much color and they, their reflectivity like just makes like such a fun subject. So um, I'm looking forward to drawing this guy and I hope that you guys are looking forward to it as well. And I'm gonna put him, he's on ice temporarily, but I'm gonna put him up so that we could all see him as he goes in his little perch right here. And so there he goes. And I'm gonna to try to keep him up there. I'm not sure if I'll succeed. Yeah, so more or less that's that's the position that we're looking for. And yeah, with that, uh, we're gonna jump right in. So uh, if you have your paper, uh, we start out the same way all the time. I always encourage the windshield wiper grip, right? And so the windshield wiper grip is that grip where we where we keep like our hands and our whole entire arm. We just keep it like very, very loose and flexible. We wanna be sure as we work that we are not like tightening up at all, but rather we're like just going like with this motion. So it's useful when you start out your day of drawing or painting to actually pick up your pencil and just do this in the air and literally just like go like that back and forth in the air. And when you do that, you're opening everything up from your arm. So I'm gonna jump over right here and I'm gonna to choose to see, I'm gonna say, okay, well, I wanna see this fish. I wanna see it in the broadest possible terms. And so the broadest terms are gonna be like this right here. I was hoping to get this one kind of fish, it's called a dogfish. And the dogfish is really, um, it looks like an alien. Have you guys ever seen a dogfish before? They have these gills that come out the side of their face and they're so cool looking, but they look, they literally look like aliens. <laughs> so, okay, so that is roughly our general shape. Um, one of the reasons why I like having something with me in the studio is because I wanna look like, let's say, if you look at me holding up the tail, see how that tail expands like that? I wanna look at stuff like that and see if I can like stretch my drawing so that my drawing like has like some cool elements to it. So maybe I'm gonna have the tail come out a little bit more than you might see right there. I might give it a little bit more of a flare. And yeah, something like that. And okay, so then the fins on the back of his body, do you guys know the names of the parts of like the fins and stuff like that? My sons know the names of it. I see some thumbs up in the air. So we have like dorsal fins, we have tail fins, right? If you guys wanna write it in the chat, you're more than welcome to. Um, so the fins on the top, when you pull on them, if you bite on this, man, does it hurt. So you can pull them up like that and you can see like more of the, the spine and the, like, you know, the, the sharp, it's not a spine, but I'm going to call them spiny things right here. Um, so then we have this fin on the side right there. And so I'm going to try to pull that out. So as I work with you guys today, um, I have the window open in my studio wide because it already stinks like fish in here. <laughs> so, okay, so we have the fins on the top. So let's put another like, kind of like ribbon up here. And that will be the fins on the top. And again, it looks a little bit more pronounced in my drawing, but if you pull it out with your fingers, you can see that it does do that. And then we have the fin down here and we're just gonna see that as almost being like somewhat of a triangle right there. So, all right, cool. Now let's give this guy some facial features. Um, maybe I wanna give him a little bit more of a front of a face. And so I'm just gonna go out a little bit further and then I'm gonna open up his mouth. And one characteristic of so many fish I don't know why they have this, but they always have this like frown. A lot of fish have frowns. I think it's something about like sealing their jaw so that they don't get undesired anything into it. 
Uh, there's this little fin down here. I have no clue what the name of it is. But you can see we've already mapped out the whole entire thing. Now, if you really like cause like all of your muscles to seize up tight, then you wouldn't get like kind of like the rolling shape of this. You see how it already has like this rolling shape? So that rolling shape, um, it has to, it has to cut through water. So when I draw something, I never just draw it and simply just, okay, I'm just observing the outermost features, but I'm trying to think about why it's built that way. So as I'm working on this, I am thinking, I'm thinking of all the ways that this guy has to cut through the water. So let's go right for the eye because there's something fun about getting that eye in just like so. And it kind of has like, it's pretty circular, but it has like maybe a little bit of a slightly wonky shape. And then there is the pupil right there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, everything up to this point has been very light. So now let's go in and start darkening things. So again, I'm looking at those tail fins and I see them as being like these long spikes that come out and then there's a fin in between and then there's another long spike. And so if you looked at the principle of what we're doing, it would kind of be like, let's say I have down here, like a bunch of posts and then in between there's webbing that goes like this. And so I find it so interesting that the spikes on like, let's say the back of this fish right here are really similar to a bat's wings because they have these like long spindly fingers essentially. And then they have the webbing in between. We kind of have webbing in our hands right here between the posts, we'll call them of our fingers, the phalanges, we have a webbing. So you can almost think of it as well as being like a webbing in between fingers. I mean, that's definitely not what they are, but I always like, draw parallels where I can. And okay, maybe as it goes back, the spikes get a little bit closer together. So I'm gonna put a few more. One way of doing like a cool, like amount of, like a, a cool effect in a drawing is when you go to do something like a spike, put your pencil down and pull quick. Put your pencil down and pull quick. And it gives this like nice fresh line like that. Um, if you try to draw this slow, like that, it doesn't have the same strength. But when you put it down and you pull like that, then it has a cool way about it. So like, I'll put my pencil down with something like this and I'll go, and see, I missed. So I'll just put the pencil back and I'll do this a bunch of times until I get it right. There, eh, you know what, too straight. I'm gonna try it again. And there, there. And so that, it has like this cool spray to it. And then I'm gonna connect all the webbing on that. Okay. So we have that upper part taken care of. Now let's move over to the head. So back to like, let's say this is like his forehead. And when you do a drawing, what you wanna do is you want to, you wanna really strengthen the outermost contour. So the outermost contour is the line that goes around something. So I want this to be pretty strong. And so I'm making it pretty pronounced right here. And I intentionally put him not on top of the ice, but I put this guy onto a dark background so that I get those nice shadows in the mouth. I get those nice shadows like to pop out areas like the mouth. Okay, so it comes around. So take these principles and roll them over to anything. I mean, you can literally use this to draw like the outline of a ballerina, or you could use it to draw the outline of an army tank where you just, you choose to see, um, you choose to see all of the outside lines and being like, you choose to see them in a strong way. So I'm even gonna start strengthening the top of the back right here. I'm gonna come down here. Now let's jump over. I wanna take a look closer at the tail fin. So man, my pencils are gonna stink. I'm gonna to have to like wash my pencils down at the end of the day. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna hold up the fish to the drawing. Okay, so like, let's look at this tail fin right here. This is why I love looking at things from life, if I can. You know, we drew a llama a while ago, and as much as I would like to, I couldn't get a live llama into my studio. Maybe I'll do that at some point in the future. That would be a fun live stream. But um, I like to get the thing in my studio so that I can actually like look at it. So now as I'm drawing this fish, I can see the tail fin. Remember we talked about that like slice before? I'm gonna get a pencil that's a little bit lighter. This is a 2B and it's a very, very faint fin. This is kind of pronounced. This is somewhat faint. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a light pencil uh, this might be too light, but I'll try it. So this is a 6H pencil, and I'm just going to pull like that. And that looks pretty cool. I actually like that. And again, you're going to mess up when you do this, and don't get frustrated. Just put the pencil down, pull, and you can practice this. And it gives drawings like a lot of spontaneity. So I'll do stuff like this when I am, like let's say, how many of you guys ever go to the ocean and see like grass on the ocean, like seagrass? So if you ever do that and you see that ocean grass, the grass of the ocean, it kind of has like this like cool like way of going like that, or it could be just the grass up against the tree. But it also looks like, it also looks like that for the fin of a fish. Now let's uh, put some webbing in here. I'm not really sure how this works. This is a different fin. Um, so we're going to connect this in kind of like a diamond way where it almost like a uh, triangle is probably a better word. So we're going to like double it back. It's going to be a little bit difficult for you guys to see this on the screen. And I see somebody wrote in, I think that's a pectoral fin. I love it when you guys have, um, the words for something and you write it in. So thank you. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm like kind of like doing these like little like triangles. So it feels like it's a little bit different than what's going on up here. So, okay, I have that worked out. Now we got a fin down here. Again, no clue, this looks like his hands. <laughs> and this fin is more pronounced. So I'm gonna go back to like kind of a darker pencil. And as I do that, what I always like to show you guys is I have over here, um, I have a piece of sandpaper. And what I do is I just rotate my pencil until I get that really, really sharp. So I don't know if you can see that. So it's a nice dark pencil that's very sharp. And so now I can dig into this fin down here. I don't think I'm going to, well, you know what? Maybe I will splay that fin out. No, it does have a cool line to it. So I'm going to splay this out right here so that you could see. And I'm going to bring this down right here. And it has, again, these like, almost like diagonal, I mean, a uh, triangular slices where it goes like that. It just cuts back and forth. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about a couple of other things just for fun. Um, how many of you guys are interested in Leonardo da Vinci? Anyone? So Leonardo da Vinci is so cool, right? So he not only could draw like the most amazing, um, you know, the most amazing, let's say like portraits, but he also designed warships, he designed uh, army tanks. He just, Leonardo da Vinci is just one of, I think, all of our favorites. So Leonardo da Vinci received a commission when he was a young man. And the commission was to do a painting of a dragon on a shield, uh, shield that was like, pretty much it was like a, a decorative shield that would go into like, you know, like a, an emperor's, like a, a king's palace. And so he got that commission, and what he did was to do the um, <laughs> to do the drawing. It's so cool. He he actually went and he got all different animals, and he dissected them, or he just like kept them in his studio. And he wrote down in his journals, "If you are going to draw a dragon, take the fins of a fish, and put them against the neck of a snake, and put that against you know like." the mouth of a shrew or of a, uh, I forget the, the opossum. And so he just went through all different animals. And so people went into his studio and when they went into his studio, um, his studio stunk because his studio, while he was working on this commission, smelled like rotten fish. I just think that's hilarious. I think it's so funny. Um, it was all animals that were like decaying. 
So here I am in my studio in Islip and I think my studio, the entire thing will smell like fish by the time I'm done. But again, if I was going to work on a drawing of a dragon, I would go out to find like taxidermy animals and I'd take like the antlers, moments from the antlers, and I would like use that <laughs> in my drawing. I would take, you know, like a raccoon's legs maybe, or maybe a chicken's legs. How many of you guys on this phone call have chickens by raising of hands? Okay, we got a bunch of chicken families. Um, I, we have 26 chickens, I think. I, we might be down to like 16. I, I don't know how many chickens we have. I take that back. We have a lot of chickens. So I don't keep track of them. And these chickens, have you ever looked at a chicken's legs? They look like the most evil velociraptors. <laughs> and then on the top, they're just all fluff. So if I were going to draw a dragon, I would take this, the fins that we're doing right now, and I would combine them with the legs of a chicken. I think that would be really fun. So, okay, so I'm kind of doing the same thing here as I did there. Where it's a lot of like these little like almost like triangular, like sharp, like I'll draw it up here. It's almost like a sharp isosceles triangle. It's like a, it's like a slice that like comes back like that. So, okay. So now I'm up to the tail. For the tail, I'm gonna splay this out a little bit because I do like the idea of the shape of the tail being wider. And so um, the tail is a lot like everything we have been working on. It's a lot of these triangular slices. I'll do the outermost portion of the tail first. And I want to have a little bit more of a flare to it. And then I'll come in. So you'll notice I always sketch the big broad aspect of something. I never stay with the specifics. Uh, I never go with the specifics first. They stay big and broad. So, okay, I'm gonna now cut in and I'm going to have these slices going the whole way. So it's kind of hard for me to hold the fish and uh, <laughs> do that at the same time. So I'm actually gonna put the fish back over there and I'm going to pick it up when I need it for the time being. I'm gonna get a, this pencil isn't working. Uh, this pencil right here is, it's a little bit too short and dull. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get another pencil that's long and sharp. So that's much better. So that's a 3H pencil. And I'm flipping over here to sharpen that up even a little bit more. How many of you guys have parents that, um, you know, anybody in your life that really loves to cook? Like a real, really into cooking. So like if someone really knows what they're doing with cooking, they will be cutting meat and every few cuts of meat, then they'll pull out the sharpening. Um, I forget the name of the thing. It's a sharpening stone thing, <laughs> knife sharpener. Um, and they go like that and they just will s sharpen up that meat knife so that they have that perfect cut on the meat. Um, so that's people who really care about their, their food. Now, when I draw, I'm constantly sharpening on a piece of sandpaper so that I can get these razor sharp lines. And so you can kind of see it in the video where I'm going in super sharp and very like curvilinear. So I love like getting these like real like amazing lines like that. So if you think of the initial photo, um, look at that tail right there. And do you see how that tail is kind of boring guys? It's like a little bit like flat and thin. That's the tail in the beginning, but now we have this like more dynamic shape. So as, as often as you can try to get nature in front of you and try to like manipulate it. Um, there is a word that I want to teach you guys that's uh, Italian and the word in Italian is disegno. Does anyone know what disegno means in Italian? So disegno, disegno. So disegno, I never, I never knew what this word was until I moved to Italy. Um, disegno is the noun for drawing. And so the word disegno is spelled D-I-S-E-G-N-O. So D-I-S-E-G-N-O. And in that word disegno, again, which is the noun for drawing, so this is a disegno, you can actually hear the word design. Can you guys hear that? Disegno, design. So the Italians, they're so cool. I really, I'm an Irishman. 
Uh, I have my Irish citizenship, so I got my European passport. But uh, everyone always jokes with me because they're like, the second you get to travel, you always go to Italy. Um, but I love the, how the Italians with art, they have a sensibility that they never just record something. They never just document like a drawing of a fish. They find the design in the drawing. So everything that you do as you guys work, try to find the design in it. Don't just like go like that for like grass in a field, but like maybe grass up against a tree, put your pencil down and see how it like splays out like that. You know what I mean? So you always want to see the design in absolutely everything you do. So I'm getting further along with this tale. And now we can start asking some of the bigger, broader questions. Okay, so we have the flow of all that generally. Now what I want to do is I want to get I want to get the light flowing across the whole thing. To do that, I'm going to put my fish back up over here and I will let you guys see him going back up on his perch. And okay, we're going to try to capture the flow of light over the whole thing. So, if you guys don't have a graphite powder, then you don't need to do this with graphite powder. You can do what we're about to do with uh, just simply like a pencil. But I would suggest if you have graphite powder and if you have a blending stump, what you can do is over here, I have graphite powder. You can see it over here in this corner. And I take the graphite powder and I put some in my hands. So check this out. I have the graphite powder right here and I'll take the blending stump and what I'll do is I'll start to shade in the fish with the blending stump. So again, if you're on the call and you're like, I don't have blend graphite powder and I don't have a blending stump, that's no problem, because check this out. You could also do it with the side of a pencil. I would go with a darker pencil, a softer pencil, like maybe 2B, 3B. And then you can do it with the side of your pencil. And then you can blend it with your finger. So you don't need to do it with graphite powder because graphite powder is just pencil just smushed up, just pulverized, I should say. So you go like that, and now all of a sudden you have a stripe across the whole entire thing. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch over to my graphite powder, because I always like showing you guys like new techniques. And I'm gonna to start to shade in the top of this guy. So you can see that As it turns away from the light, there's this nice shadow on there. And then he has these really beautiful lips that you just want to kiss. They're just so beautiful, these lips, right guys? I think everyone on the Zoom is saying no, absolutely not. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, so I have the lips kind of like mapped out a little bit right there. Um, I, wanna, I wanna allude to the gills that are over here. I'm just gonna do it like really lightly. You know what, maybe I'm gonna jump back to my pencils and I'm just gonna put in the gill over here really lightly. And then I'll jump right back again to a darker pencil. Now, he, the pupil of this guy's eye is much darker, uh, much bigger, sorry, than I made it. So I'm gonna give him big old eyes and the bigger you make those pupils, the more scared he looks. He looks like, I don't know, he's saying to himself like, oh darn, I shouldn't have bit on that thing. I'm gonna leave part of it white for the glossiness on the eye. And then I'm gonna jump right back to a lighter pencil. And I'm gonna to start to like model the eye, the cavity of the eye right around it. And to model that, really, you're just reinforcing the outside of it. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail, uh, hopefully in a little bit. So, okay, so now I'm making my way down the head behind the eye. I'm really just looking at the fish for all the shading right here. It's both shading, but it's also like the, the surface of the fish actually is genuinely darker in some spots. And I'm gonna come back here. Now, at the tail right here, the tail is light and the fins are dark. So to get that, um, I don't know, I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna think about what I should maybe do. 
So if the tail is light and the fins are dark, then maybe what I want to do is go in with my blending stump. Or again, you could do this with your fingers. See how I'm doing that with my pinky? And if you, your hands are getting a little dirty, that's a good thing because you're building up like the ability to shade. So I actually like it as my hands get really dirty as the day goes along drawing. So now the fins are kind of starting to like pop off on the back right there. Okay, so I will now, I want this guy to pop even more yet. So what I'm gonna do is if this is dark over here, I'm gonna leave this light. And if the underside of him is light, then I'm gonna make it dark down here. So I do that for a very uh, specific reason because if you want something to pop off, what you do is you go dark on light and you go light on dark. So if this is dark again, then in the background I'll have that light right there. So that dark pops off. If this is light, then I'll make the background dark. And if you don't have that graphite powder, very few people do, uh, just go ahead and shade it in with the side of your pencil and you can get just as good an effect. I like using graphite powder because um, it has like a smokiness about it and I can get the effect quicker. So, James wrote in and said, my friend once kissed a fish. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> and I think Gianna wrote in and said, I would never want to kiss that fish. That's so disgusting. <laughs> All right, so the fish is starting to like, with those values that we put behind it, you can see like the fin is really starting to pop off. I'll show you the other technique with the blending stump where I take the graphite powder. If you're looking for graphite powder, uh, your parents can look it up on Amazon and it's they sell a whole entire bag of graphite powder, which will literally last you years for like something like $10, I forget. You can get it on dickblick.com if your parents want to go on that art supply site. Okay, so I like how this is starting to like really pop off over here. And I'm gonna really push that dark. And what I might even do to make the drawing pop off more yet is I, I might, I'm gonna put my graphite powder back. I might switch over and start to get really dark pencils out so that I can cut in up against it. So like, let's say I'm gonna get like, I don't know, I'm going through and looking at a 6B. So I want a really dark, dark over here. So I'm gonna push this into like the realm of like 6B, just right up against the body. And you could say with all this, like, well, why am I doing so much on the background? One of the things I try to teach you guys is that if you wanna have a strong drawing or a painting, you actually use the background to pop out the foreground. If that is in fact what you're trying to do. So dig in really nice and dark right up against the bottom of him. And you don't want it to be like just a stripe. So you could like kind of phase it out like that and then grab your finger or you could grab your uh, blending stump and you could kind of like fade it so that you don't want it to be just a splotch of just real jet black right up against them. You want to kind of dis diffuse that. So I just like spread that out like so. And okay, so he's popping out even more and more. Now I'm going to jump right back up to the upper area and I'm going to get back to like, this is a 2B pencil. And with a 2B pencil, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig in even darker on the eye of the fish, let's say. And now I'm going to go up on the upper part of the head and I'm going to dig in even darker on the body right over here. And that's going to cause this thing to turn. It's almost as if we're shading a sphere or something like that. And I'm strengthening the mouth right there. And I'm going to get a really light pencil that's much more precise. And then I'm going to start digging in right around where the lips are. So a lot of the fish, whenever you're drawing a creature, 
a lot of the, like the impact of it is going to be in the eyes and in the mouth. I mean, the nose as well. Uh, but the eyes and the mouth are going to say a lot about that creature. So I spend a lot of time modeling like an area like this because that's where people's eye oftentimes, that's where it's going to go. And okay, so now I'm going to jump back maybe to the fins right here. Um, no, I'm going to go up here instead. And I want to clean up this area. So if you notice, I have my early lines, I call them searching lines. And so those early searching lines, I kind of like feather them out. And what you can do is you can take your drawing now and you can use the natural arc of your hand. And I'm going to take this 2B pencil, I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit. I'm going to take that. And now I'm going to start darkening moments of these spines. So I'm going to use the, the curve of my hand to have these slices really pronounced um, in like a cool strike. So I like the way that that looks. It has like this like power to it. And that looks so much better already. Now the webbing in between, I'm going back to a light pencil that's really sharp. And I'm just gonna do the webbing with like a really sharp light line. And then I'm gonna kind of dig in and I'm gonna shade in these fins. I'm gonna like give it a gradient. I'll make it go from dark to light more or less. And by going from dark to light, it just keeps it from turning to like one long clunky thing. Like I, I don't want it to look like just big and heavy and I don't know, kind of like opaque. So, all right, let's turn it back over to see how that looks. And that really does make it look so much stronger right there. So I'm going to make my way down to the tail fin and at the tail fin, um, I can kind of do a similar thing. I'll turn my paper again and I'll use, the curve of my hand to try to get like that strike. It's never going to like perfectly line up with what I drew there, but it's, it's working well enough. These curve in the opposite direction. So I'm going to turn my paper again so that my hand goes with the curve of this. So as I work on drawings, I'm constantly turning them over. And it looks so much cooler this way than if you slowly, slowly did that. Um, maybe I want to give some more definition right here to this fin. And sometimes I'll dig in and do multiple strokes. Okay, so now let's try to get the overall shading on this guy. Let's try to like move it along even better. So, okay, I'm gonna glide quicker over here. I'm really getting an idea for how this thing should look now. There's a bit of darkness right here on his body. I forgot altogether to do more on this fin down here. And I'm going to kind of like do information around the eye. Um, I'm going to like cause the eye to like, maybe like pop off a little bit by going dark right up against it, but then a little lick of light. And so you see how that dark on light is working really well. And then down here, it's light on dark. And then you can say like, okay, well, that's too much of a dark cloud. That's too much of a light cloud. You can kind of like fade it out so that they meet each other in a gentle gradient. And when you guys look at drawings and paintings, what I want for you to do is study how, like, let's say you have a favorite artist, a favorite painting that's in a museum, a favorite painting that you see in a book. 
or an illustration by like N.C. Wyeth or something like that, I want you to study and see what it is about those paintings that like really causes them to stand out to you. And take note of the backgrounds in favorite paintings and how backgrounds actually will do so much to like make something like um, believable. So this fish has um, all these little scales on it that I definitely won't have time to do um, in great detail, but I can allude to them. So I keep all different blending stumps. Blending stumps, you can make them out of paper yourself by just literally spinning paper. And the, there's a pattern, and they actually use the pattern in woodworking, and they call it herringbone. And there's a herringbone pattern to it where there's these like little triangles. I'm trying to get a really nice, crisp indication of the triangles. So they go like that, these little triangles on the back of the fish, like so. And so that will, you know, make its way all across the entire body. And the herringbone pattern is actually the same pattern that you see in like chain link fencing. It's triangles that go up against each other. And it's gonna, as it turns towards the light, it's gonna be less and less um, visible. But I will take then the pencil as it turns towards the dark and check this out. I'll put in a little bit of the herringbone pattern as it goes against the dark. And after the call is over, you guys can do this in your own time if you want. Um, again, as it goes towards the light, you can't pick up on it. But as it goes towards the dark, you'll pick up on the pattern. So I let that almost have next to no pattern. But then on the, his back, going up to his fins right here, you can like allude to this, or you can do it with a blending stump. You can't do this with your finger because it's just too precise. And so you can see how you can get a pattern going across the whole entire back. That's just gonna give him like that really cool feeling of like, you know, the, the scales of his body. So with that, we are right at our time. Um, so I'm going to straighten my drawing out and I'd love to see your drawings if you guys want to hold them up. Um, if you want me to comment on, on it, just put your name really big right next to it because sometimes your faces get covered. So write your name right next to it and then I can, I can comment on your fish. <laughs> I was going to show you guys something that I've been working on. So I can't go into too much detail with it, but I thought that I would share with you um, a drawing that I've been working on. And so this is my dream studio. And so I have a dream of one day having my own studio that I could call my own and that would look something like this. And so long story short, um, I am the studio that I'm in right now. I used to teach in the studio, um, kind of ran into some logistical storage issues and stuff. And it's my hope to one day be able to have a studio in which I could teach. And so um, if you look at this right here, I drew this uh, yesterday. And in doing this, I used all the principles of perspective. Um, everything that we use today when we were like developing form, learning how to do the outside line. So I used those principles and I sent this off to a carpenter. And so the carpenter and I were looking at this house that um, I'm strongly considering buying. And we would be, um, long story short, converting a huge barn and turning it to an art studio. And so I said this to the, the carpenter. I was like, hey, this is what my hopes are. This is what I'd like to do. And he was like, those drawings are fantastic. He's like, we can absolutely do everything that you drew there. He's like, it's really, like, those are architectural blueprints. They work perfectly. So I thought it'd be cool to share with you guys because sometimes we think that, like, drawing and painting is just like, oh, it's pretty and it just, you know, it's something that, we do and it hangs on a wall, but drawings and paintings can actually turn into reality. So I've actually built several studios uh, through the years and I did it all by just coming up with drawings and giving it to carpenters and giving it to builders and then they do this. So that would be really cool if that could happen and that's what I'm prayer prayerful about. Um, and if I had a place like that, a dream of mine is that I could open it up and then students could come in from all over and they could study and they could maybe do like a week long course or something like that. So that's what my wife and I are dreaming of with our kids. And I thought I'd share that with you guys. 
So just want to say thank you guys for all tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. And I'll talk to you later.